What's going on Vault Dwellers? It's Top Ranking Noob. I'm back at it again with another video for the patch 8 for Fallout 76. Alright, it's been a long night. Uh, so there's been so much to cover. I finally got through the new storyline quest and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the entire event with you. So this is going to have some spoilers, ye be warned. But hey, also, if you guys want to check out some cool Fallout 76 gear, make sure you head on over to U4GM. I'm going to be putting their link down in the description along with a coupon code that's going to save you about 5% on some of that awesome gear. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to start off with our brand new quest line. It's going to start off with a quest called Line Low. This is going to take us several different missions in order to complete. It's a little lengthy. I mean, I really enjoyed it. In order to start this off, we're going to need to read a poster called Sa uh, Sheep Squatch Ate My Brother. Uh, we can do this by either visiting a train station. You're going to see a poster up there. Or you can go to the Atomic Shop. If you go into the featured items, you're going to see this poster there for free. So you can grab that up, put it up in your camp, and if you read it in your camp, it'll start the quest line as well. So a couple of different ways that we can start this quest. Nonetheless, once you find that uh, poster, go ahead and click on it. You'll be asked if you want to start it. Just click OK, and of course, the quest line lying low is going to start for you automatically. So this is going to be stage one of the quest line. Once you accept that mission, it's going to guide you to uh, a place called Lewisburg or Lewisburg Station. Uh, this is just south of Vault 76, quite a ways south on the map here. Uh, but like I said, it's going to put that little yellow diamond quest marker on there, just like everything else in this game. Uh, once we get there, you'll see that we got uh, a new building that we can enter into here. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to find that poster, there will be one right next to the entrance of this door. So essentially, you can just fast travel here in order to start the quest too. Nonetheless, once you get there, go ahead and go inside the building. And what we're going to need to do is find a total of five different clues. Now these clues are optional, you don't have to find all five of them, but of course the first one's going to be the hollow tape inside this crate that you're going to see when you first walk in the room. Uh, the next two are actually going to be in a glass case over here. In order for you to get to them, you need to be able to uh, open it up, obviously. You're going to see this little button behind the counter. Just smash that button and you're going to be able to get the next two clues. One of them's a note about what to do with the bone, basically. And it just says, uh, give a dog a bone. You need to go into the basement and put this into one of the dog's mouths. So we're going to grab that bone and then we'll run that into the basement real quick. Well, before we do, though, let's go ahead and head upstairs. Uh, this is a three-story building. On the second floor is a kitchen because, for whatever reason, that's where kitchens are. Uh, and there's going to be a third clue up here uh, talking about, uh, I guess it's like uh, where the code is. On the third floor, there's going to be a terminal that we need to access and we need to have the code in order to access it. And this is just a clue telling us that. Uh, so from there, once we grab that code, we're going to head back down to the first floor where we push that button. There's a little door that's not locked and it's going to lead us to the basement. This basement's a little creepy. It's got like decapitated alien guys in here and stuff like that. Uh, also a couple of um, like uh, wall mounts as far as animals go that uh, we're going to be able to actually loot throughout the, the game as well. I think they're random drops. There's the dog that we're going to put the bone in, but there's another clue over here, a little letter from mom. This letter is going to be a little more important later on in the quest line, as well as this calendar. We'll talk to that uh, once we circle back to this location. For the meantime, though, let's go ahead and put that bone in this wolf head here. Once we do that, the, uh, the head's going to lift up and we're going to have access to a little safe. And inside this safe is going to be Calvin's security code. And this is going to allow us to access the computer terminal that's on the third floor. So let's go ahead and head up there and see what we got with that. So the computer is easy to find. I went ahead and ran up there because this is going to be a long video. Anyways, access the, the terminal on the third floor, select the bottom option, and then from there you're going to have the ability to download coordinates. Once you download the coordinates, this section of the mission is going to be done. So we've officially uh, completed phase one. It's going to give us the destination of the very next location. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to Bastion Park, which is actually just a little east of uh, Lewisburg. Uh, so I, I only had a quick view of the map there, but if we go there, 
Uh, it's going to have us ask for, yeah, I shouldn't say it's going to ask. We're going to need to look for three different clues here. And in this case, this is a very simple location. The clues are all right next to each other. Uh, so we're going to go into this little uh, park here. And our first clue is going to be on the floor. It's just a, a little... Um, a little letter from Bo Peep explaining the situation. I'll give you guys all the opportunity to read that stuff, but as we turn around, there's going to be a little doctor's medical bag with the second uh, letter in it that we need to read. And this one is from the Big Bad Wolf. You're starting to see a little theme here. Uh, and this is basically just a, a fixer uh, who's not very happy with us, or I shouldn't say they're not very happy with Calvin, apparently. He screws up a lot because he's psychotic. Nonetheless, so uh, Bo Peep and uh, Calvin here are in big shit. Uh, from there, we're just going to turn around and there's going to be the third uh, clue from here. And this is just like a police statement because apparently, if you read through this, things didn't really work out for Bo Peep here in this location. Something really suspicious happened and now she's dead. This is a little police report saying they don't have a clue what happened. Once we get this third clue, we'll get an update on our next location. So these clues are going to take us all the way to the southwest side of the map. There's a place called Sal's Grinder. So it's like a little um, like a little cafe, if you will. As I spawned in here, I had this nice, beautiful looking dramatic moment with the, the, the morning mist and the rays and everything going on. So I had to just keep that in the video. Uh, but what we're looking for is just a diner. It's pretty easy to find. It's in the middle of uh, this little barricade here. Um, and we're looking for, as we get in there, I say it's easy to find, but now I can't even find the front door. There it is. Uh, we're looking for three clues as we get in here. One of the first clues is going to be as we get into the door, there's going to be a little booth over on the wall. Uh, and on that booth is just going to be a hollow tape. This is going to play a message, and that's going to be clue number one. The second clue is going to be right down the hallway. There's a cigarette machine with a message on top, and this is just a message talking about a psych evaluation for Calvin there. So as I mentioned a couple of times, he's a little nuts. But of course, if you're chasing a, a sheep squash, that's probably the case. The next clue is going to be in the terminal on the second floor. It's got that diamond on it, makes it pretty easy to find. So like all the other terminals so far, we're just going to sort through there. There's a lot of cool little backstory on there that I'll leave up to you for it. But basically, you're just going to go there uh, and view the, uh, the replies here. So you're going to go down to the bottom two options. Once you do that, the, uh, the, what is it? The third clue is going to update for you and the mission here is going to be complete. So we're going to be ready to go to our third section of the mission. So this third section is going to be called the load down. And of course, once we get that, it's going to update our map and tell us where we need to go. Also though, for the last part of the mission, I got a funky reward. It's called the Pearl Peepers. Uh, this just seems like a regular pair of binoculars. They're a little cooler looking, but they're also supposed to be able to track enemies. So basically, when you look through them, you can actually mark enemies. I'm not going to say that they're necessarily all that amazing of a reward, but maybe they're going to be useful later on down the road in a future mission. I, I was expecting it to be important later on, but it wasn't. Nonetheless, the, re the next main mission is going to take us back to Lewisburg. So we're already back to where we started. And what we're looking for now is a patrol car, um, which is like uh, what we, we discovered apparently is a police report uh, on that terminal. Uh, so we're going to be looking at this patrol car before, uh, well, first we're going to kill the scorch that's stuck in the, the ground for whatever reason. Oh my God, I can't talk. It's late at night. Anyways, here's our patrol car. Uh, kill some scorched if you got to, but your uh, first note is going to be in a duffel bag on the passenger side of this uh, patrol car. What it's going to have us do then is it's going to give us a note about uh, it's going to play a hollow tape and it wants us to investigate a house with a flamingo in the front yard. There's only a couple of houses and they give you the general area. It's this red brick house that we're in front of right now. Here's our flamingo. We got a little garage on the right hand side. We're gonna go around the back and basically there, there was two cops in that patrol car, as I said, spoiler alert, uh, and they seen a suspicious dude hanging out by this grill. They went to go check it out. Things did not work out very well for those two patrol dudes. Uh, so we got a hollow tape right here that we need to grab up. 
Uh, and if you listen to the hollow tape, you can right. see exactly Stay why close. things didn't work out for Let's him. The but then there, we also need to look inside uh, this um, cooler and we're gonna have the second item that we need from here as well. And this is just a note from that big bad wolf uh, talking about a monitoring station located here in um, Lewisburg. Uh, so now that we know where the monitoring station is, we're gonna go there. This is apparently Bo Peep's monitoring station and we're gonna get another clue. So it's all just kind of circling around with uh, Lewisburg here. So anyways, we got that note. Our monitoring station is gonna be just down the road. It's uh, all the way at the end of this road. It's gonna be on the roof. You can kind of see it there. Uh, there's a few different ways to get there, but the easiest way is probably the fire escape at the back of this building. Um, and of course you gotta go out with a bang by exploding some stuff and try not to kill yourself with this two shot exploding shotgun. Anyways, here's the fire escape. We're just gonna head up there uh, and we don't need to do much. If you haven't noticed, a lot of these missions are really just grabbing notes. The hard part is kind of finding out one where the notes are and two what the notes want you to do. So here is just another set of instructions along with a key card and this note kind of makes mention a lot with that mom's note or that letter from mom mentioned earlier about laundry. So it's almost word for word. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back into the building where we very first started the quest and we're gonna go back down into Calvin's basement. Uh, so I mentioned uh, when I first came down here that there was a letter from mom that was gonna play a more important role later on in the mission and we're at that point along with this calendar. So if we were to take a look at this letter, it's almost word for word on that last note we found on the roof of the building across the street. Talking about delicates, talking about uh, washing it uh, and, uh, low, things along them lines. So what we need to do is set the wash machine to delicate. We need to put it on low heat and then after that we got to just click on the calendar. And what that's going to do is open a secret door. Uh, so, you know, Calvin's got some secrets. Uh, and this is a pretty cool, like, this is a pretty cool mission. Aside from having to gathering up all these letters and stuff like that, if you actually read them, it's a pretty interesting story. Uh, so I've really enjoyed this quest line. Um, but for those of you that just kind of want to get it through, that's kind of why I'm creating this video. So you can just kind of do click throughs if you want. Because not all of us really want to read. Nonetheless, if you look around this uh, secret room, there's blood all over the place. A uh, little spoiler alert, things didn't work out very well for Calvin. On the shelf is going to be clue number one, because uh, again, there's more clues here. This is really just talking about, you know, the Bigfoot fans and whatnot. Um, there's going to be a clue as well. There's not a clue in that box, but inside this toolbox is going to be our second clue. Uh, so we want to grab that up and if you look on the wall just to the left of this toolbox this is all giving you like a sneak peek of uh <laughs> sneak peek i'm sorry it's four o'clock in the morning when i'm shooting this of what we're going to be dealing with so this uh sheep squash spoiler is a robot uh with those two uh clues we're going to be going back to this terminal now we're going to go through a few of these options and what it's going to do is it's actually going to kick you off of the terminal it's going to give you a hollow tape and uh, so this one took me a minute. It just automatically puts the hollow tape inside your inventory. And in order to access the rest of the terminal, you have to go into your Pip Boy and play that hollow tape. The second you play that hollow tape, you can go back into the terminal and then access the rest of the file. So it took me a minute to realize that the hollow tape they wanted me to listen to was already in my inventory. Uh, so hopefully this video saves you a few minutes on that. Nonetheless, once you do that, you're going to be done with this section of the quest. Like I said, there's a lot of good reading material in here, but if you're not into that, I understand. But once you're done with this terminal, we're going to be done with this section of the, te uh, the quest, and we are going to be on the final stretch for this new mission set. All right, so now we're going to be dealing with the wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, so this mission is going to take us back to the south part of the map. We're going to be going to a location. This should be uh, familiar for those of you that have the excavator power armor. We're going to be going to the Granham, uh, Gr Gr Garenham estate. So these are those really tall looking uh, kind of cheap mansions in the sky, if you will. 
Uh, I don't believe we've had access to this one in the past. I think this is brand new, uh, and I could be wrong. Maybe it was just something that I missed. But when you first come down here, um, I know I've had access to one of these mansions in the past. But in order to go up there, you do need to have a key card. And so as you come into this building, there's going to be an elevator that you have to go up to. Um, but before you get into there, there's going to be a little note uh, just to the left of the elevator here. And this note is just saying, hey, we need a key card in order to get up. Um, so, you know, you can take a quick look at the note. The second you read the note, it's going to tell you where the key card is. And, of course, that's just south at one of the headquarters where we got the excavator power armor. Super simple to get. Um, but if you were to try to open the door without it, it's just going to say that you don't have the right key card. Unless I'm totally wrong, in, in which case I might be. Maybe we've had access to this uh, mansion in the sky the whole time, and it was just something that I missed. Uh, it happens. Nonetheless, so we're going to go down to the headquarters here. Uh, and, uh, you know, in this case, there were some mole miners and stuff like that. Nothing really big or anything unmanageable. This key card was pretty easy to find. Uh, all we're going to do is go through the main door. I hopped around a lot because I seem to recall there being a bunch of mines in this area, but maybe another player had cleared them out. Going into the main door, uh, the key card is going to be like right in front of us uh, as we go through here. Uh, it's going to be sitting at the office at the very end of this particular hall. So like I said, it's extremely easy to find, easy to get. It's not hidden. You don't have to do anything crazy special for it. But since you're here, you might as well pick up some shotgun ammo. So there is our Garenham Estate access key card. Once you got that, we're going to go back to the elevator. Uh, and you have the choice of going up to the second floor or the third floor or story. I don't know. It, it's more than one floor. My recommendation, I went up on the second floor. I would go all the way up to the third floor if I were you. Because what we're doing is we're going all the way up to the very, very top of this building. Uh, so even if you get on the third floor, you're still going to have to go up a few flights of stairs, uh, battle your way through some robots, and up at the very, very top room, there's going to be a terminal just before we hit this balcony here. Now, uh, this terminal, just like any other, it's got a lot of cool information from the Big Bad Wolf. Uh, we're just going to click on the bottom option, and what that's going to have us do is look for the Wolf's uh, Cache A. He talks about it being in the wagon, so it's kind of vague there, but it's really easy to find. The wagon is just a car that's located directly behind us. So if you turn around, there's like this little space car looking thing, and it's right in this, uh, I don't know, I guess you would call it a trunk. Um, doesn't look very spacious, but uh, yeah, if you just activate it, that's going to op update the quest line, and that is Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. So super simple to get. There's hardly any bad guys. Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting about this quest is I did get an item. I got a weapon called the Fixer. And I got excited because, you know, new weapon, cool. Uh, but in my mind, this kind of seems a little stupid. It's a level 30 weapon. Uh, it does give you some sneaking power and some movement speed when you're sneaking. So you would think that it's a legendary. But that box over to the right, or I should say the left, it's just completely blank when you look it up. Uh, but like I said, it's a level 30 weapon. It does very, very little damage. It looks like it was supposed to be cool, but unless you're just a new character, it's borderline worthless. Um, so from there, all we need to do is go up to a cabin that I haven't unlocked. I'm going to go to Widow's Peak. Uh, and this is just northwest of Lewisburg. So it's all consolidated within this area. Uh, there's a little cabin up there. And this is going to be our final destination. Basically, as we get to this cabin, we're supposed to be able to access a terminal in order to call out the, uh, the, the sheep squash. You can see there's a whole bunch of people here just waiting here. So it's easy to farm. Once you've done it once, you can do this boss multiple times. But you just have to access this terminal. I do believe it's on a lockout timer. I'm not sure what the timer it is. It could be 30 minutes or an hour. I haven't had the chance to do a second round yet. But because it was on a lockout timer, when I did, went to activate it, my mission just completely just disappeared. The terminal told me to try again later, uh, but the mission was completely gone. Uh, so I got kind of worried that maybe like there was a glitch, but there is no glitch. Um, 
you know, it's just on a timer. So if, if it doesn't trigger for you right away, just kind of hang out, wait for it to trigger. Uh, as I said, though, you can do this mission repeatedly. Uh, you do need the Assaultron Recall Key Card in order to do this, and that requires a few uh, not quite so rare items, uh, except for you do have to buy an item from a vendor that costs like two grand. Anyways, while I was goofing off with that, the uh, Sheep Squash finally appeared. And this is a really interesting boss fight, at least compared to Fallout 76. It's not necessarily just a tank and spank per se. Uh, this, uh, this boss does turn invisible. It is kind of a tough fight. Uh, they spawn ads. And basically, you just have to activate these relay stations at the right time in order to make the uh, Sheep Squatch vulnerable. Now, even if the Sheep Squatch is not vulnerable, it will take damage, but it does take a lot less damage compared to when it's vulnerable. Other than that, though, it's not an extremely complicated fight. If you've been gaming for anything more than 10 minutes, then you've probably done things challenging. But all in all, like I said, they dropped some pretty cool loot. In this case, he's a level 73 star legendary, so uh, some potential for some awesome loot. And once you beat the Sheep Squatch, that is it. We have officially completed the mission, at least thus far, unless there's going to be any continuations on some future patches. Who this video turned out to be a lot longer than I was expecting. Uh, nonetheless, I hope you did find this video helpful. It's a complete walkthrough of the new quest line. So if you were having any trouble, hopefully this helped you get all the way through it. Although most of it was pretty straightforward. I really do appreciate you guys watching. I think my next video is I'm just going to nuke this location and then see what we come up with with this boss fight. I'm hoping that Bethesda did something really awesome with this by dropping a nuke on there. Maybe this boss will do something like totally amazing. But the reality is there's only one way to tell. Nonetheless, it's like 420 something in the morning. So that's all I got for you. I appreciate you sticking through the video. It's been a long one and we'll see you all next time.